everyone hear me? Everyone hear me in the back, Queen? Yeah, oh, yeah. you're good. Okay. Yeah, okay. Sounds good. <laughs> well, I have to write home. Um, good afternoon, folks. I'm grateful for you all being here at this chamber event. Uh, my name is Anthony Lloyd. Uh, I go by my online name, Tech Tony, or Tony for short, because only two people tell me about my full name. That's my wife and my mom. So, <laughs> yeah, that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, so, I am a Google Data Engineer here in Dothan, Alabama. As a matter of fact, um, I'm the only freelancer Google Data Engineer in the state of Alabama. And it's this license right here. So these are six of my licenses that I carry. Uh, this one highlighted in red is my certificate from Google for my, my lessons in Google Data Engineering. What, pretty much what that does is that when you write ads or you go online, any of the Google services that I'll be covering today will be going over how to write a proper ad, how to properly mainly maintain your Google My Business profile, which is also known as Google Maps. Now, first thing first, I want to get off the table is that Google and Facebook are two completely different platforms. Facebook is used to help businesses find prospective customers. Google is used to help prospective buyers find your business. And the big problem that I see with businesses is that they will use Facebook a lot and treat it like Google, and then they'll see it fail. So right now, when you take a picture of this, this is the biggest thing that I want you to probably take away from this meeting, is the differences between the two platforms. And if you're interested in having me come back, I do have a slideshow that goes over these uh, in better detail as well. <clears throat> so here's what we're covering today, is Google My Business, also known as Google Maps, Back in the day, it was known as Google Places, and that is the app on your phone that is known as Google Maps. It has nothing to do with Apple Maps. Uh, you guys don't realize Apple and Google divorced, and so this will not cover anything having to do with Apple Maps. It's also the Google Maps. And this will be the biggest concentration in my, of my presentation, because this Google My Business has the most amount of power when it comes to free platforms, usage, and the biggest thing is a free website. A lot of clients that I deal with, um, they'll be plumbers or electricians that work out of their house and their work vehicle is how they get around to your businesses. And they go, well, I don't have a place of business. I don't have an office. You don't need an office. You just need to have a presence online so you compete with your competitors. And then they go, I don't have a website. As long as you keep up and maintain your Google My Business profile, Google will provide for you a free website. And I'll go over that in detail. Not just the website, but the hosting and the domain is also free as well. For a lot of, for a lot of bigger businesses, that website can also serve as a backup. Right now, um, one of my clients, a playmaker, Teamware, his website's down because we're currently redoing the whole site. But his Google My Business profile is what's in place right now, so he doesn't lose any traffic or doesn't lose any customers. It's strong enough to be able to play around with what you can call the bigger players in town. The next thing, up, the next three areas of briefly going over is Google Ads, which is the primary base that everyone advertises on with Google Search Network. And those are the ads at the very top of the search result. If your business is relevant to wherever someone will search, not only do you be able to properly show up, but you probably show up in the proper places as well. I'll also be briefly covering Google Analytics as well. That is the end all be all of tracking codes. If you're running, if you're just online in general, and you have a website and you don't have Google Analytics, <coughs> It's like driving without a windshield. Whether your car is blacked out, you don't know where you're going, you don't know what people are doing on your website. And the third area I'm gonna cover is called Google Search Console. And what that is, is a lot of people talk about SEO, and they don't really realize what SEO entails. If you're paying someone to do SEO, or you're working on SEO, Google Search Console is that platform you use to maintain your online for your organic business. So some quick terms I want to go over real fast. There's a little bit of lingo in my industry. SEM is search engine management. When someone says SEM, it's an umbrella term for SEO and PPC. They're not the same, they're always separate. So when uh, marketers will say, well, I deal with SEM, they primarily mean, or they should mean, I deal with SEO and PPC. SEO is search engine optimization. There are two forms of it, on-site and off-site. Normally a lot of people, when they advertise I do SEO, they're talking about on-site because it is the easiest form of SEO to do. That's blogging, videos, uh, following the 
traffic and behavior on your website, what people are doing. That's all on-site SEO, making sure your, your web page is ranked for particular search terms. Now, SEO is, you got the ad to the top, and if it's a local search, you'll have your map. And underneath that are all the organic results. And a lot of times, if you guys notice, those organic results won't show up because Google wants you paying on those paid ads, clicking on those paid ads. Offsite SEO is the hardest form, <coughs> excuse me, the hardest form of SEO to do. A good SEO specialist can probably get you right, offsite SEO specialist can probably get you right in about three years, and that's link building. That's when your business is on someone else's page, they have authority, what's that authority? That's not too much. They have authority to have you on their page and they link back to you, you link back to them. That's link building. That's primarily um, what we're doing here will be considered offsite SEO. We're all shaking hands, getting to know one another, referring each other to one another. Next is pay per click. And there are several areas of that. There's search, which is primarily the best way for your business to make money. Those are the primary ads at the top of the search results. Then there are display ads, which are those fun filled little pictures that you see on apps sometimes, uh, especially with a free app. You'll see it, um, ads show up there, and those are called display ads, and there's a way to control those as well. Uh, YouTube ads, we've all seen those, left and right, skippable and not skippable. And call, <coughs> excuse me, and call only ads, which in conjunction with search ads are great. Um, I have a funeral client of mine, during business hours, he runs search ads um, for people to find business for pre uh, registering before death. After hours, he runs ads 24 7. So once he closes the doors at 5 o'clock, his call only ads will engage, and we change terms to if grandma passes away at 2 30 in the morning, I'm going to try and find a funeral home. He's the one that shows up, his phone number pops up, they click the call at 2 30 in the morning to come and deal with grandma. <clears throat> and of course, the last section that I'll be covering is analytics. <coughs> Please excuse me, it's my allergies. I'm not from the South, and something's blooming, and I can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> so first thing first, Google My Business, aka Google Maps, for some of us have been around for a while, uh, Google Places. This is literally what the dashboard looks like. Um, I try to make it look as clean with a laptop as possible. This is actually my, my personal uh, dashboard here as well. Um, Pathfinder Digital Marketing has my address and all of the tabs. Now, <coughs> something you want to notice here, these could be 100% 100 different from mine. Depending on the industry or niche that you tell Google that you are, a plumber's dashboard is going to look different from my dashboard. A car dealership dashboard is going to look different from my dashboard. E-commerce dashboard will look completely different. Um, there might be some similarities, but the majority of the time, uh, depending on how you fill it out, will be how you show them, uh, how, what tab or options you have. If you look right here, the product is in beta. Google is always changing, trying out things. You might get picked for something that this plumber might be able to do, but this plumber won't be able to do on his dashboard. Or always in beta, we're changing things. As a matter of fact, in the middle of me building this presentation out, um, Google had an update that came up, and so I had to boot two of my slides and replace it with something else, because that's the game. They're always changing as well. <coughs> the biggest thing I believe that will be in everybody's platform is a set as a website. Once you fill out all the proper information pertaining to your business, and once you verify your business, and you can verify one of two ways. If you're a new business, there'll be a postcard from Google about this big, pretty colorful card in this. It kind of looks like a, something you get from the IRS. <laughs> it says Google on it. Or if you've been in business for a while, you're verified by phone number. Those are done for businesses that have authority online. Google knows, oh, this is a legit company. They're just moving down the street. Just verify their new location. The website autofills as well. All the information you put in, pictures that you post, customer reviews, automatically upload to the website fresh and new, ready for your clients to see. So it's practically almost a zero maintenance uh, package that you, that you get to play with as well. <coughs> and there's, I have a quick video here for you to watch real fast about client online. members. So I just went over the Google free website. I want to give you an example of one of my clients website. This is a kid Will's custom framing on Washer Street. He doesn't currently have <laughs> uh, award credits or a website or any of those other types of website platforms he uses 
his Google website. And this is free from Google, the URL, the hosting, uh, the domain, it's all covered by Google. He just has to use the set up and they're very easy to set up. As a matter of fact, um, I do this for free for my clients. I did this for free for him. Uh, they cost me anything to do and it's effective and drives traffic. And I'll show you an example of what I mean by that. And it's just a very simple, straightforward setup, call to action type of deal. It has his information, um, testimonials, examples of things he's done, and the most important thing is location where he's located, where he's at, business hours, all the good stuff that you need to start running. Um, it hopefully adds if you feel like using them or just having a good online presence. I'm gonna go into more detail what's more things with using Google My Business. I said this is a great platform that if you're a small business, especially a new business, you really need to be leveraging this to your advantage. Hello, chamber members. So I just went over By the way, I forgot to mention, if any, any of you have a question while I'm talking, please feel free to raise your hand and let me know, and I'll be more than happy to answer it while the slide's up or, or the question you may have. Yes, sir. Right. So that when Kidwells has a physical location, what if you do not? What if you're a home-based business or something like that? How does that treat that in math? So <clears throat> there's a section when you're building it, it's one of the first options that you get, and Google will ask you, do you have a physical location, yes or no? And you just click no. And what's going to tell you is you get the option to do areas. So you'll be able to choose, tell, 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 tell Google, all right, I don't have a physical address. I mean, I don't have a business, brick and mortar, but I serve Dothan, I serve Enterprise, I serve Troy, Helden, and it will highlight those areas for you. So when you, when someone Googles local plumber and you're on that list, you have the right to show up in the search results. And I'll show you that a little bit too as well. Um, but yeah, no, and then, it will still ask you for an address because it has to send you that that postcard, but it will not display your address publicly until you're ready to. So, this is, as we know, uh, here in Dothan, 88% of searches done here are on mobile phones. 80% 80, 80 of the time. If you look at your phones, there's not a lot of space on here to show up on. You gotta be able to do properly ranking. Optimize your listing. I'm going to go over that a little more. How you optimize your listing is there's a section called posts. And, you, and this is where Facebook might bleed to Google a little bit. You treat it like Facebook. It's going to ask for a picture. It's going to ask for a description. Always have a picture. Don't ever post on Google without a picture. Picture, description. It might ask for a call out and a call to action. And those call to actions are different depending on your industry. It could be, well, everyone has a call me button because everyone has a phone number. Or it might be, uh, fill a form or watch a video or download something. When you start posting on Google, on Google My Business, it's going to take your business and look at it and it's going to start indexing it. We had an issue, um, equally even cool with a client of mine. Uh, they bought a building and the building prior to them was labeled as a laundromat. So when they opened business, it took time <laughs> for me to optimize their listing and tell Google, all right, this is no longer a closed down laundromat. This is an HVAC client. Because they were still in their business, they were still ranking for a laundromat when they opened up and there were phone calls for people to drop off their clothes. And she's like, we're not that, we're an HVAC company. About six months later, we're doing this work, they no longer rank for that. They now rank for all their HVAC um, type of search terms. 76% <clears throat> of local products end up, local, I'm sorry, local searches for products end up visiting the location within a day. That's a really good turnover rate. I don't know about you, but I'll take a 76% chance to throw somebody on a sale if I could with those type of numbers as well. And that's great for brick and mortar buildings when someone's searching for something, clothes, shoes, what do you get when you go out for yourselves, you gotta make sure those listings are updated. So here they are. The goal is to be included in the local three pack. That's what this is called. This area is extremely competitive to do so. I'm kind of proud of this picture. This is a live uh, screenshot because Ecohe and Cooley does not spend nearly as much money as Bob Bula does. He dumps about 10 grand a month on Google Ads. I know this because I track it. <laughs> Ecohe and Cooley does not, and they still show up competitively, organically, against their competitors. 
that's the best part about why you want to keep it optimized, why you want to post on it. <coughs> and then you have diamond H back as well. So, how to get ranked properly? First thing first, complete the listing fully. Complete an accurate Google My Business listing. Don't lie on it. Google will find out. And if you lie on it, you'll get one warning. If you don't change it, you'll get banned from the search network. And trust me, that is so hard to come back from. I can't tell how many businesses here in Belton in a wiregrass area I've had to work with to get them get their website back up. Google will take you down. If you lie, you're not gonna be able to advertise, you're not gonna have your email show up, your business won't show up. It, so <coughs> be honest on it. The last thing that comes down to is positive sentiment, also known as good reviews. If you have two companies next to each other and they're both competing for the same search and for the same searches that you are, Google's gonna come down and take a look, it's come down to reviews. How many reviews do you have and did you respond to them? The reviews are primary ranking factors organically and paid. And that's the, that'll be the end determining factor of who shows up in that pack. Now when someone leaves your review, if it's good or bad, just reply to it. It doesn't have to be an essay. Um, you don't have to use all 2,000 characters and just type away on it. Simple thank you, we appreciate your business. If it is a bad review, reach out to them. That's what Google wants to see. Because not only do they want to provide people with the best answer for their search, they want to provide people with the best business that they will take care of them as well. And we'll, that, that was essentially what it will boil down to. So feedback, get a good review. Get all the good reviews you can. Reply to all of them, I just mentioned that. The web app better reviews like I mentioned earlier, reply to them. Google knows that you're gonna get, we've all, all of us are in business. We're gonna get that one customer we're just not gonna make happy, no matter what you do. You're gonna get a one star review. I got one myself, a two star review. No idea who the person is, but I got it. <laughs> and I responded to it. As long as you're not always getting one-star reviews every single day, it's not gonna hurt that bad. Um, Two-star, three-star, and four-star reviews really, really affect your industry, will affect your, your search results. Those are the ones that Google wants to see, well, did this business try to make it right? Did, did, did they reach out to the client? Don't forget your five-star reviews, of course, reach out to them. We appreciate your business. Thank you now, thank you for your service. And you'll see over time, you'll start ranking higher. Now, if you're doing paid ads as well, reviews, good reviews, will lower your cost per click. So instead of paying $2 for a search term, you'll pay $1.50 or $1.79. Because Google sees, okay, this business actually tries. We're gonna lower their cost per click so they get more business as well. And that's definitely, for any business, paying these nickels, dimes, and quarters add up over time. And you definitely get those reviews. I have a question about the reviews. Um, for the first two or three years, Escape Mode lived and died by TripAdvisor. We, we channeled a lot of energy into getting five star reviews there. We had 800 of them. And then we have <coughs> a handful of one stars, and some of them would be people that never even came into my business. They would review us based on the hours. I mean, we're a Friday, Saturday, Sunday business. They say, I stopped in on Tuesday. Uh, what, you know, there's nobody was there with one star. And they've never even interact with us. Is there a way to boot or uh, yes. get some of those bad or yes. Ill, irrelevant reviews off of? Now, Google will take their time on the ending now. We're talking three months, five month process. But there is a, <coughs> I can shoot you your email, I can shoot you a link, and it's a form you fill out, and there's also one number you can call and talk to a physical person and get those reviews contested, and Google will research them. They will actually reach out to whoever left reviews, one star to five star, they will reach out to them Google. They have a big call center out in India, trust me, it's huge. And they will start calling people to make sure, hey, does this company actually start to resolve the issue? Or why did you leave a one star review? Oh, they were closed on Tuesday. They'll take it off. Okay. It can be done. A little bit of process, you gotta stay on top of it, but it can be removed, yes. Now, if it's a legit review, sure. and you earned it, the one star, uh, it's gonna stay. Um, I, my experience has been how you handle a bad review says a lot more than yes. you know, 10 five-star reviews. It's like, if we had a problem, here's how we try to solve it. That's, that's been successful for us. But if you get one, if you get a one-star review, you're gonna need seven five-star reviews 
give me a backup. That's what it comes down to. So I have done that with my business. I got two star reviews, and now I'm back up to 4.9. Um, I am contesting that two star review that I got because I don't know what this is. But <laughs> that's, that's something that I am going through right now myself. Do you, um, do you respond to a five star with maybe no comments? Yes. Okay. Respond to all of them. That's what Google wants to say. It's funny because I had a client of mine who was a butcher here in town. Um, his investor left, so he couldn't stay open anymore. But his competition was Walmart and Publix. And we don't have to, obviously, a small butcher is not going to have the money Walmart does to spend on Google Ads. You don't have to beat them, you just got to rank with them. And you rank with them because of his reviews. You respond to every single one of them. Google gives you a link on your dashboard. The link is a little six six letter code that you can email or text to people. You click on it, and it opens up right to your profile on the review section, and they can leave a review real quick. And you do an email or you do a text, that's what he did. Every person that came in that bought his meat, happy or not, he sent them a review. So that surely his ads started ranking with Walmart and Publix for natural meat selections. And it worked great. As far as uh, reviews go, um, I mean, obviously, you know, you want everything organically, um, but <coughs> I guess what I'm trying to get at is you don't want to, like, try to make a push for everybody to leave a review on, like, the same day or no. all, all, all like that. You want natural growth. Uh, there's a lot of black hat tactics out there, even gray hat, which I don't do. So I... I only do terms and conditions because I work too hard for my license and I don't want to get booted from the loop from the search network. So I do everything legally and I'm not a data broker for my company. I don't collect your information and I'll sell it. Everything stays in house here in Dothan, Alabama. I just don't feel it's right for me to do that type of stuff. But those type of tactics, yeah, you want natural growth. Several reviews a week, one a day if possible. But if Google sees that you're just getting too many. Like mom, dad, cousin, aunt, you're just like throwing all family in there. It will, it will remove those reviews too. Because they will call and confirm if they're a real client or not. Your clients will get calls, will get calls or an email at least. So, yeah, be very careful how you play that game. Um, that will also get you banned from the search network also. Um, hosting on Google. I mentioned this a little earlier. This is the part where Facebook and Google will bleed into each other. How many of you have a Facebook page? How many of you post on it? Whatever you stick on Facebook, copy, paste it, slap it on Google. Very easy process, same process as you want to fit on. I'll be posting them on Facebook. You're gonna have a description, you're gonna have a title, you're gonna have a call to action on That's what I love about it. The best part about it, it's free. There's no cost to this at all. People will see it, people will engage with it. Um, this is Folklore Brewery Majors, our client online here in town. Um, if you like beer, they're great to have. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, there's, <coughs> like I said, these options will change bearing on your, on your industry. But they have what's new, they have events, and they offer their products. I can't advertise their alcohol. Their uh, alcohol is on Google, strictly no alcohol, no tobacco products at all whatsoever. CBD is a little different game. We can put up the words a little bit on that. I, have some, like I mentioned earlier, I have clients uh, that run Amazon stores that run CBD products on it, but that's a different volume. Anyway, their thing is events. Getting people to come out. Come out. Is that it? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thanks. Please leave your feet afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> so how we get around with this um, strict terms of condition, because he makes money selling alcohol. The public buys alcohol, come to his place, buy alcohol, it's events. And we push this on Facebook, we push it on Google, and I'll show you a little demonstration a little, a little later with another client of mine and how to, and how to leverage this uh, type of um, type of call to action what they are. Um, each of these what's new events offers across will have their own individual items to fill out, but all of them have a call to action. And you never ever want to post without a call to action. What's the point? Your pictures, it looks pretty, that's nice. What do you want from them to do? You want them to sign up, buy a ticket, come buy a beer, buy a shirt, something. <coughs> pictures, powerful. Um, <coughs> look right here. It gives me how many weeks to made up. 
how many views. This will be up to 34 weeks, has 136 star reviews on it, and just so on and so forth. Um, popularity of the picture, how long it's been up, what people do when they engage on it, all this type of information is 100% trackable. And I'll go over that analytics as well. And you just want to post pictures to keep it fresh. Um, this is a logo, you're going to want that. And then some type of cover picture, just like on Facebook, you have your logo, your profile picture, and a cover photo on the top as well. Switch them out, play with them. Um, if you're lucky enough to have a graphic artist that works with your business, uh, they will have the dimensions on how to post it because Google can get a little picky on how you post a picture, but be patient, it can be done. Question? Yes. Um, any video plan? Yes. So, if you're posting a video as a post, 10 seconds or shorter. I got one currently right now. I don't know why, it's just how it is right now. That's currently how they're testing it. I got one, if you look at my business profile, I have a 10 second video for this on there. If you post it on the picture, knock yourself out as long as you want. You post it as a picture and it'll upload as a video. What's really cool about it is when you upload these videos, when someone searches for you in the search results on Google, those videos will auto play. They won't play the stat on, the image will move. And it's a little eye catch, it's pretty nice to play with. Um, GIFs, those are real popular. Post those on, on pictures when people search for you. The GIF will autoplay on your profile, on the search results. And they're pretty fun how to do that. Starbucks right now is a really fancy one that they got up right now if you want to look them up. And Starbucks International. <coughs> <coughs> Messaging. This is a love hate situation with me because it doesn't work on Apple. Sorry. <laughs> and what I mean by that is if you have an Android phone, you would engage your, your, you would turn on your Google messaging via, via the app on your phone. If someone sends your business a message, any type of message, it will ding and give you an alert. If you're on iPhone, and it's, it's just because they don't like each other, you have to manually check your messages every day. And um, one of the things a lot of my clients pay me, uh, do with me with, because I have an Android, I'll get the messages, I'll screenshot it, I'll send it off to them so that they can log on to their business profile and tend to whatever the customer's questions may be. I actually have an Apple and I have that on it and it gave me yesterday, so. Did it? It works on Apple now. Maybe they changed it. Like I said, they're always changing things and beta testing stuff. Um, depending on the version, your carrier, and um, what type of phone you have depends on what version of Google Maps you have. So you might, it might be a different version. But this is really powerful because a lot of people, they're busy with their life, Probably don't want to send me emails or they just quickly, hey, um, one of my tire shops here in town, all the time, the people constantly message them, I need this size tire, I need this, I need that. 10% um, of his business comes from Google messaging. That's, that's a pretty penny that he's getting from just people texting him on their phone that they're looking at their tire. They'll send pictures. Do you have this tire? All through Google messaging. It's great. Um, what is the acronym for GMB? Oh, Google My Business, GMB. <clears throat> and it's great, what's really funny is when you receive a message from Google, if someone then set up their profile properly, they'll get their phone number <laughs> and they'll just call them. Or they'll have their personal name on there. That's, uh, that's, on, the, all the, that's on the other end of the current messaging. Everything is trackable. My game is data. Does it work? Does it not work? What's happening? What are people doing? Um, one of my favorite things is I'm always constantly testing data. Um, some of my clients, I send them emails all the time. I have more tracking codes in those emails. I don't know if you opened it. I don't know how long you read it. I don't know if you watched my video, there's one on there. Because I, want, because I test out the titles. What email did my client open? What email did they not open? Data is the game and you have to be collecting it and you have to be looking at it at the very minimum once a week, open up your, your Google My Business profile and check the data. It's under info, it's on, it's on the left hand side. And there are a lot of things that you can look at. For, for, for example, listings on search and listings on maps. This is folklore's information, the folklore brewery in Adrian, Gilson, Alabama. So in search, this is organic, and the last quarter, they showed up 7,400 times. On map, they showed up 37,000 times. 
And these are events, these are listings such as things to do in Dothan, events in Dothan, things to do on the weekend in Dothan, stuff like that. This is what they show up for. Very trackable. And right around here is when we had that um, October fest going on. And they spiked up, and then they got other information going on. It helps us know, okay, well, next year, we're gonna plan this event out because it did well, or we're gonna change these vendors out because it didn't do well. They want people to come and see their events and buy their alcohol. This is the customer actions. Remember, you always want a call to action. There's no point in posting if you know. And these call to actions are visit to your website, and these are non-pay, these are all organic clicks. Request for directions. How many people call them? And how many people message them? In this case, uh, in the last quarter, no one did message them at all. Mainly phone calls and requests for directions, because I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's kind of out in the middle of nowhere. So you really need directions to get there. Trackable, trackable, trackable. What event do we post? What color place to go up? Does it work? Does it make money cool? We're going to do this event next year as well. Any questions about Google Ads before I move on? I mean, uh, Google, I'm sorry, any questions about Google My Business before I move on to Google Ads? With the free website and the, the setup and everything, can you add widgets or anything like that? that no, just it's a real fancy placeholder. And it. it's good enough to compete against anybody in, in our industry here. Mm -hmm. Over time, I would highly recommend, <coughs> excuse me, I highly recommend you invest in a WordPress site. Uh, WordPress builds our Google and Facebook love the build a WordPress site and it helps you rank a little bit above your clients as well. And knock yourself out with the widgets on there. So Google ads, we see them all the time. And a lot of people tell me, I never click on the ads. That's not fully the truth. 64% of daily clicks are ads. And Google is really good at sneaking them in there, especially on mobile phone, and really good at making sure that you don't ever click on that. There's all sorts of, like I went over, shape, forms, and ways to sneak an ad in. Um, I had a client, not a client, my, my neighbor next door in my office, I ran ads for Action Beauty you can see here in town and he was shopping for a car, and the ad was chasing him around, and I looked at the ad it was, and it was my ad chasing him around so he could buy a car. <laughs> and I told him, sorry, but you need to click on it, but you know, tracking's all about that. There are two forms of ads. So you can, you can two, two platforms that cover, the, that cover Google ads, and that is smart ads and search ads. I'm gonna tell you this right now. Never use smart ads. I'm gonna show you what one of those dashboards looks like. When you start a profile and you get ready to run ads for the first time ever, especially if you're new, Google will default to search ads. And I tell you, Google is not your friend. They will make the most amount of money they can off of you. I had clients that when I, by the time I get this, they're like, I don't know what happened, but I spent $4,000 this month. I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> and I look, because they're my smart ads, and they're real sneaky. It's three clicks. And it's Google take the wheel. I'll go over a little more in the video I'm about to go over. You want to run search ads. These give you the most amount of control to the user. And you dictate how your ads are going to show up in the search network, the times they'll show up, the positions they'll show up, every little bit of detail. That's what I do. This is my, this is what I love doing. I love, I love writing the ads. I love writing the Java coding that goes behind on how these ads will interact with people. How some of my clients I have their ads if <coughs> excuse me. If they go to a competitor site and they don't do a call to action, like they don't call the competitor to do a bill for them, their ad will chase them around for a couple of days. Um, I have another client of mine that we just finished talking about, his ads will show up on your free apps, things like that. You can't do that with smart ads. I know it sounds real real nice and fun, ooh, smart ads. And when you try to exit out smart ads, Google goes, are you sure? Don't use it. If you don't know if you're using it or not, let me know. I'll look and I can tell you in three seconds if you are or not. I'd be more than happy to help you with that. And here we go. This is, a, this is a demonstration of the live dashboard. One of the sections is heavily blocked out because there are competitors in here, so there's certain things I can't display. So uh, bear with some of the blurred sections that you're gonna have to see.
What's up, guys? So I just went over two of the types of ads you can run on Google. Now, nine out of ten digital marketers are not going to recommend <laughs> using uh, the smart ads on that Google defaults to that wants you to run. Now, the biggest reason being, as I may have mentioned, is you have no control or editing power over how your ads will show. It's literally just Google takes the little type of deal and it runs with it. Now, I have seen results with uh, clients of mine have gotten some decent results, but not the best. What I'm showing you here is an actual live Google search dashboard. Now, this is one of my clients. This is one of the many types of campaigns that I run and maintain for them. And just alone here, there is a slew of information that I can give you here. Let me just show you a quick example of the difference from this dashboard to a uh, smart ads dashboard real quick. Hang on. So this is a smart ads dashboard. And this was not running because I turned it off from the client of mine. A lot of times people try to run Google Ads. This is the brands are trying to do it. And they dug it in their office to do it. It's a, they kind of just do it by accident and they don't realize it. And as you see the difference from this dashboard where there's, there's nothing for me to edit, no way for me to control keywords, phrases. I mean, we got, I mean, I don't know what that is. Um, type of deal, it's just there. <laughs> um, somehow that's Google showing them up for that type of deal as compared to a search campaign. Now, these are great. Everything here, I maintain control. Even when you're building one of these up, uh, Google still tries to uh, hold as much control as possible. You don't want Google to completely take the bill. At some things it's good at, believe it or not, and some things it's not. Uh, it's better to have a human being uh, looking at something. And this is active as it's running. I could keep hitting this refresh button up here and things will start to change. It kind of works like an analytics dashboard, which I'll show you that later on in this presentation. And what's really neat about this is it shows us their ad, shows us their, their, their landing page, how it's running, day, time, hours, genders, things like that. Uh, this particular client uh, works in the events, entertainment venue uh, with alcohol. So there are some extremely um, strict terms of terms of conditions that we have to abide by to maintain this campaign. Another thing is um, being able to track proper conversion values. Now, what's really important about this is that a lot of companies will run a third-party dashboard for reporting. Um, I don't do that. Google doesn't necessarily recommend it. And the reason being is to look. This is another dashboard. Look right here. Uh, these ads alone are set by Google. These are Google's conversions set by them. And then up here are conversions that I built out myself. You see right here, they're recorded. So in a short time period, I've gotten this client a particular amount of conversions. Um, Google maintains them, Google tracks them. I maintain them, I track them. It's very important that you're able to see this as a business. So if you're running ads, you need to be able to see this. And I, I practice transparency with all my clients, the good, the bad, the ugly, we all see, we see it all and see how things are running. Another really cool thing that Google has that you can't do on a smart ad is coding or known as scripting. Let me show you this. I'm gonna show you two different types of scripts that I write to my clients. This is primarily a budget script. It's very important to write one of these apps. Google can overspend. Uh, it does that a couple of different ways. The reason being because if there is a high demand, for your product or service, uh, Google's gonna push your kind of a little hot and a little heavier to get you those clients, to get you those, those leads. This is a very simple uh, budget script that I wrote to help maintain my client's ad to make sure that doesn't happen. And because I'm a one person man and I can't keep an eye on these ads, I have Google constantly logging to keep an eye on it. These run, 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 run. Believe it or not, 90% of marketers actually don't take advantage of the right custom script for their clients. Let me show another one I wrote. This is a weather script, and I use this for my HVAC clients because they're very highly affected by the weather, and they run at 24 7. So if the temperature changes at 2 o'clock in the morning, I'm asleep, but their ads are running, they're covered, they'll adjust as needed 
to make sure they get the most quality clicks out of their out of their ads as well. It's a pretty neat a little trick that I use to help some of my clients out. And again, these only work on search. You can apply these to Google Smart Ads. So I know this was a very, uh, for the sake of time, watered down run of, the, of what Google Ads are and how they show up on your search network. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, like always, uh, save them to the end of this presentation. I look forward to helping out answering your questions. Thank you. That was a bit nerdy. <laughs> <clears throat> the amount of control that you have when these ads are probably built out is incredible. Over time, digital marketing is a long-term game. This isn't something that you're going to just plaster up there and hope for the best that it just works. It's monitoring, it's editing, it's collecting all the data. Um, and then seeing, well, we ran this special and that didn't work, but we ran this event and it worked. Uh, George and I just had that actually happen to us. We sold out the bank of blankets, but our Saturday event flopped. It's looking at now trying to look at the data. What happened? Why didn't people show up? Why didn't they that click and it didn't show up as well? Did the tracking code not fire properly? Did it, did it not chase them around for a while? Things like that are questions that you have to be able to maintain an answer. Now, does anyone in here currently run Google Ads? Do you have you seen this dashboard before? Fantastic. I can't tell you, like I mentioned earlier, I practice transparency with all my clients. The good, the bad, the ugly, what worked, what made the money, what didn't make the money. I've seen too many times where marketers will set up a third party platform of some sort and doctor the ads. Uh, there's a client of mine who's a lawyer, he's, he spends a significant amount of money, and he was only getting two phone calls a month, and he was spending a lot of money with these ads. He never ever saw his Google dashboard. They were doctoring the numbers. And it turned out, I, the reason I, I, I went to this business is because of the modesty transparency. <coughs> if something doesn't work, then I said, don't mind, finally talk about it. Um, another client of mine, Cam, uh, Metcalf, we ran some ads for tax, taxes. Um, a lot of his calls were from Liberty Tax, had to readjust. He talked to his, to his girls, his secretaries, found out what happened, and we made adjustments as needed. Um, this information, if you ever run ads, you need to have access to your dashboard. If you're ever concerned about it, please feel free to reach out to me. We'll have you go over in further details. And I'm out of here. There it is. This is Google Analytics. As I mentioned earlier, this is the end all be all of tracking codes. If you have a website, at the very minimum, you need to have a Google Analytics tracking code on your page. Um, if you don't have one, or you're not too sure, please hit me up and we're happy to tell you if you have one or not. I'll even set one up for you for free. It takes me three minutes to do it. And you'll have a tracking code for your website. The reason this is so important, everybody, Facebook, um, Google, Microsoft, they all report to Google. They give, this is where you see all of your data, every, every last bit, everything you're doing. If someone burps on your website, they're gonna know what you had for lunch. That's how detailed this tracking code is. And if you're running ads and you don't have it, like I said, they can just drive me down the windshield. Your windshield blocked out, you don't know what you're seeing. <coughs> beyond the reports. Google Analytics automatically surfaces actionable insights based on your data. So if you are the type of business that's an e-commerce, you will assign a value to every conversion. Uh, how much is it worth for me to sell these shirts? How much is it worth for these shoes? A uh, current client of mine, he, um, he's only open Thursday, he's only open Friday, Saturday, Sundays. So every click to his website, every conversion to him is worth $25. That's what it costs for people to go to him. I will track every click. I know, hey, last week we made you this much money from your Google Ads, and then this many came from Facebook, and this many came from a video you put on, on YouTube, things like that. You need to be able to track it all. Data is a game, and there's no such thing as bad data. It, all, all data will tell you something. 
see your key metrics quickly. When you look at this dashboard at first, it doesn't matter if you're a hot dog stand or a Fortune 500 company, you get the same dashboard. Over time, tiles, and you'll see that, I'll show you them in another video, will start filling out with different information uh, going over <coughs> the direction that people went into, what interests someone had, and this data is collected on you two weeks prior and two weeks after. So when you go to someone's website and you click on it and you're taking action on there, Google's gonna know, well this person, prior to visiting this website, is interested in XYZ. And after he left the website, he's interested in ABC. Um, who's here familiar with the Cambridge Analytica showdown that happened? Right, we all heard about it. Per person, Cambridge Analytica, Analytics, or Google Analytics, had a million touch points per individual. And you can see all these touch points. When you log in, there's a way to log into Google and Facebook and see your interest in touch points. Uh, some of the DNA members, I went over that in my last 10 minute, where uh, one of the things that I was interested in was tickling. <laughs> so there are a lot of different touch points and ways that you can interact and get a hold of someone. When someone says, well, I was just talking about it, and now these ads are on my phone. No, the, the, the analytics, the data knows you better than you know yourself, and knows you're getting ready to go on that trip to Hawaii, so you have those airplane tickets and hotels ready for you. It's that good. Seriously. So is it literally not listening because I swear? No. <laughs> no. Are you sure? 100%. The only thing that ever listened was that Verizon TV box that came out about three or five years ago Yeah. that I mentioned to you guys before. If, they, if it heard mom and dad arguing in the living room, it would start, it would start uh, playing uh, therapy commercials. If they heard a small kid in the living room, it would start playing uh, age, it would guess age appropriate uh, commercial for that child. That's the only thing ever that has, that has access to that in a box, so you're not carrying that in So how about Siri and Alexa and all that? I mean, if I just said, okay, <coughs> now everybody's going to have a photo yeah. stick out on there. Key terms. <laughs> it's listening for, the mic is on, but it doesn't record, it's listening for key terms. Uh, I swear to you, I swear to you, uh, I, you know those terms and conditions we all just zip by? Yes, I, guess I just want to play my new app. I read them. <laughs> I sit there and I read them because. All right. So now I've said pogo stick three times. Everyone oh, gets right. an ad. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone thinks I'm pogo stick. I'm gonna spill one out real quick. That's how good this dad tracking is. Um, Google first. So uh, does anyone have kids 18 or older that have a Gmail? Okay. Everybody has a profile on them. It takes two years to build a profile on somebody. Once you start using it, if you start using your credit card, by gosh, even better profile. It will build on you. Um, but, but this, as I'll show you on the analytics, it doesn't pull up Bob Hope, and this is his IP address, this is what he bought. It goes on data, I'll never have his name. It just knows, you went on a trip last year, it's about that time, here are those ads again, or that hotel you stayed at, or whatever. Um, Target, oh, they're great at it. Um, they know, uh, we shop at, I shop at Target for diapers. I have the app on my phone. And it knows when I'm about to run out of diapers, it just shoots me an alert. Hey, you haven't been a target for a while for diapers. And I'll spend a little wiggle and get my coupon and I'm gonna buy my diapers. <laughs> That's how good this tracking is. Um, in association with Facebook tracking as well, with their pixel code, whew, these serious, almost pinpoint accurate data. It doesn't happen right away. Um, you run them as a very minimum, if you're running ads or thinking about it. Remember, it's a long-term game, and you're going to at least be running ads for six months before you have any viable data to go off of. Because we're going to be cleaning stuff out. This is a wrong search term. This people don't work, aren't good for you. This age group isn't the age group you want to bid on. We want to increase on 65-year-olds that make $30,000 a year or something like that. Once you get that pinpoint data down, your people are just seeing your ads hitting you real quick. Effective. Oh, okay. I'll Mark in line over uh, for you in this person to do that before. Run down of Google Analytics. Now, Google Analytics is the end all, be all of tracking. Facebook reports to it, Instagram reports to it, everybody reports to Google Analytics. If someone burps on your website, you're going to know what they have for lunch type of deal. 
So this is a live Google Analytics. This is actually uh, Google Merchandises, Google, uh, Google Analytics for them. And I get to practice on this is where my lessons come from, actually, when I'm training on this platform. So as you can see right now, there's quite a bit of information that's going at you. Whether you're a Fortune 500 company or a small, little hot dog stand, the dashboards will look very similar and they can be quite overwhelming. Uh, for the majority of my clients, different things will be important to them. Like, for example, my clients are selling tickets type of deal. We will track down here what they made, goals, revenues, things like that. Um, <coughs> what pages are most popular that people are, like your top, your top selling products in this case, what people have been buying lately as well. Um, Google Ads revenue for this. Now, when you run ads, this is, and if you're able to assign a value to clicks or impressions or uh, to leads, you can assign Google Ads revenue as well here. Uh, for some industries, it's more difficult than others, but that's able, that's something that you can take advantage of here. Another really important one is where people are coming from or what pages uh, serve you. It's called an acquisition report. So for example, um, like I mentioned earlier, the SEO on-site off-site <clears throat> on off SEO. If you're doing off-site SEO and someone says, hey, I'm sending you traffic type of deal, and you're paying them to do that, this is a good place to check that. As you can see, it breaks it down here for you. Well, that's an easy organic search, direct, referral, pay search. Uh, sometimes these will be tied in good as this one. So they'll just like Google type of deal. Um, affiliates for this one, social, other, and display as well. Um, you can get some pretty seriously detailed traffic on this. Let me show you an example. So, for example, here are people's interests. This takes into effect what people have searched for in the past. Primarily, this goes roughly about two weeks back and two weeks forward. So what were they looking for before they bought from you or visited your website? What were they looking for after they bought from you or visited your website? Time to go screen for upselling as well. So we got some travel buffs here, technology mobile enthusiasts, um, sport fitnesses and fitness buffs. It's, you can get some pretty, um, when you're on Amazon, when it says this person bought this with this, that's where they get it from. <laughs> extremely detailed breakdowns about how people, what type of people interact with your site, what interests have they had that brought them to your page type of, type of information. Now it's not like a one-on-one -on -one person type of deals, I can give you a person's name, you can get, put them in groups type of, type of scenario here. This one is pretty fun to look at. This is the real-time overview chart. So if you look over here for a second, what people are doing, uh, that just jumped. Um, it shows me active as it's happening as well. So I can sit here, literally, and I, I don't recommend this when I do this because this can be stressfully overwhelming, even for myself. Sit here and just watch where people are going, where are they doing. Um, and yes, exactly. <laughs> so it's really cool. Um, take out Star. I work with Alex. He's the owner of a great place that you guys should definitely order from. When we look at this page, we're able to determine what order is about to come in, so they can start hey, sending drivers out. That's something Alex and I were chit chatting about how we can implement that a little more. But it's very interesting to see. Yeah, and then why did they leave? Where did they go after that? Watch people um, check out type of deal. You don't see your credit card information. You might even be able to pull that information up. You can't do that. But um, <laughs> you literally sit here and see what uh, behaviors people are taking on your website. Real-time live as it's happening um, per second. There, there's a slight lag that depends on your Wi-Fi, of course, and distance. But this is some pretty serious information that you can get and use while you're building your website to edit it. Um, a really cool thing, let me show you something else here, is your site speed. Um, every second it takes to load your site to load, you lose you have a 20% less chance of converting that client to a buyer or a customer or whatever you need them to do on your website, whatever actions you're taking. Every second that hit that takes your page to load, you're losing 20% every single time. And it's pretty great to, to look 
and, and share this information with your webmaster and see, hey, you know what? A lot of people are looking at your Internet Explorer, Safari, Chrome, Samsung, things like that. Um, break it down. You can break it down by phone, phone type, iPhone 7, Samsung Galaxy 6, Samsung Galaxy 10, iPhone 10 type of deal. And really get down into the nitty gritty of how your website interacts or acts or lack of acting on certain browsers and certain cell phones, tablets, even TV screens as well. It's pretty darn interesting. Uh, to look at and make sure your whole team is on the same page that people can see this. Uh, you can assign certain sections, so you can send people on your team uh, only certain information. So, me as your digital marketer, certain parts I can look at. Uh, your webmaster will look at things like this and be able to make sure your website's up and performing. It's really, really interesting, I'm extremely detailed. I'm, I'm not even, I'm not even scratching the surface of the capabilities that Google Analytics has. Now, of course, for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and draw this session to an end. If you have any questions or concerns on Google Analytics, of course, save them to the end, or feel free to hit me up uh, uh, privately as well. Thanks. Um, any questions or concerns? Yes, ma'am. Um, when you run a Google search ad, are you able to build a look like audience like you do with Facebook ads? Yes. Yes, you can. And then, are you able to get a pixel in order to place on your? No. On so, pages? Facebook and Google. So, Facebook has their pixel code, and that's their own version of Google Analytics. But Google, I mean, Facebook, if you have if you have Google Analytics on your website, mm -hmm. Facebook will still report to Google. So you get your, your social media data. Um, it's not just Facebook. It'll be YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Um, if you're using apps, those will show up in there as well. Everybody reports to Google Analytics. Questions or concerns? Anyone else? Cool. This is just ignorance. No, that's is fine. Please the ask. analytics a tab on our Google homepage when we're signed in to manage our pages. I, I, how do I get to what you were looking at? I've honestly never looked at it. So, um, it will be your Google Analytics will be associated to a Gmail account. Um, it could be the one you use for email or whatever situation you may be, but it will be associated to a Gmail account and the same logins. One, one login, one password for all your Google services is how I try to uh, keep it. Some people, they'll make like three different logins and have three different emails, but primarily um, you have it on your website. I know that. Um, when your website was built, ask your webmaster, hey, uh, where, where's my login for my Google Analytics? And it might be the email that you're using right now. And very simply, just go to googleanalytics.com, log in, um, to type in your password, email, or very logged in, auto log you in, and if you and if that's the correct email, it will pull up that dashboard immediately for you. If it's not, they'll come to a set of page and be like, oh, that's not the right one. Back out and try again. So the last section I want to go over is Google Search Console for SEO. This is a live stream. Of, I have another video associated to this on what uh, Google Search Console is. This is the trove that all businesses reach out for. The free organic traffic that you don't have to pay any money towards. You're probably ranked online, people click for your product and they product or service and they become a client or a customer to you. SEO, like I mentioned earlier, uh, there's only two SEO specialists I know of in America that can rank you faster than the North. And that's Neil Patel and Advanced Media in, in uh, New York City. You can't rank SEO in a month. And we've all seen that those people who might have gotten ads I'll increase your traffic 300% in the next week or whatever. No, that's a good way to get your website banned from Google. A good SEO specialist like myself, I could probably get your ranking in about a year, organically. On um, paid ads, you're looking at about six months. And like I said, when you play this game, it's a long-term game. You see what works and what doesn't. If you're currently doing SEO or paying someone for SEO, you need to have access to this dashboard. It will register every single search term that you have had ever and with them, how you and how people have interacted with it as well. So let me go over here real quick. So, I know it looks like a lot, but this is actually, once you look at it for a little while, it's not that hard to uh, understand. It's probably one of the easiest dashboards uh, that Google has that you can look at. So this is 
a live Google Search Console. This is both Word, Brewery and Mutri uh, Search Console. And if you're doing SEO in any way, shape, or form, you're 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 going against Google as much free traffic as you can, and you're paying someone to do this, and you've never seen this dashboard, I could really go back and reconsider uh, your search engine optimization game. Now, this is data strictly free data. None of this is paid for ad traffic. Um, none of this is the traffic on the Google Maps either. So even though we have not this as showed before, um, everything is in there, it can get a bit overwhelming. So Google has everything separated in a separate dashboard as well. You have your Google My Business dashboard, your Google, your, uh, Google Ads dashboard, and now this is your search console dashboard, which is strictly your organic traffic. What I mean by that is this is, so I searched uh, restaurants in Dothan, Alabama, right here, and even though this three pack is organic, it's not included in that search in the search console. What it's going over is this information down here. Everything underneath, well, well if there were ads, there'd be ads up here. Everything underneath the maps and everything else. This is your search console information. The reason this is important is Google will display the websites the most likely answer the question in the search query or are the most relative to it as well. And these are so important to see, especially if you want that free covenant traffic from Google, you've got to check your search console and see what queries you're showing up for. So this is what people type in and it clicks and it fills the exact uh, verbiage. So remember when I talked about Google Ads, it's variations of that verbiage. Here is the exact search query. Um, gives me the pages it went to. Countries in general, um, I work to block a lot of these out, and it's a never-ending game because there's lots of IP addresses in Spain and everywhere else. Um, these are devices, which is very, very important. Um, I recommend all my clients that we concentrate mainly on the mobile because that's inside the highest traffic. We all have our phones on us right now, as it is. And search appearances, dates, it just keeps going on. This is all of our free organic traffic and how people are finding us and what they're doing on our website as well. That's the gist of Search Console, of course. If you have any questions or concerns on, on this tracking, please let me know or save your questions at the end of this uh, presentation. Thank you. Um, any questions or concerns? Well, well uh, let me real quick uh, appreciate thank you to the Chamber for this opportunity. Um, anyone here is not a Chamber member, I highly recommend you talk to uh, Suzanne. <laughs> Um, I definitely owe part of my success in my business to the Chamber, the Building Chamber of Commerce, and they uh, they definitely some great resources for you. So if you're here and you're not a Chamber member, uh, please talk to her. It's definitely uh, worth it. And thank you to my clients that allow me to, to demonstrate this. Now, there's one last thing I want to show you guys before I forget. <clears throat> we all know Facebook is pay to play. You have followers, and you got to pay for them to, come on buddy, pick it up. You gotta pay for them to see your content sometimes, right? Well on Google, and I'm doing this live for you so you can see it, Google has what's called a following feature. And you should, every business here should be using it, especially if, you, if your business is brick and mortar and you really want people to come back after they left your business. This is AR Workshop. This is their Google One Biz profile. If you see right there with this follow, there's a little coupon code up there. If they click on that, it pulls up a coupon. They give you something to use in store, they give you something that you want people to use online, or you just want them to come back. When people follow you, you hit save, and whatever app they have that saves their coupons, it automatically saves their coupons to that app. Or in this case, it saves them to my, to my pictures. Every time someone follows you, it doesn't matter you have 10 people, or 10,000 plus people. Every time you post, put a new coupon, everybody automatically gets an alert hit for free. There's no cost to it. It just takes that amount of effort you're willing to put to your business to make those posts. And this is really great for breaking more stories. I need people, they come, they left, hey, follow me on Google, there's a coupon on there for the next time you come in. They hit that, they, the coupons expire every two weeks, they gotta stay on top of it. But every time you post something, what's new or what's going on with your business, everybody automatically gets an alert. 
or on social media, you have to pay for that type of coverage. Google is free. Boom. Everyone got it. That's the last thing I wanted to cover real quick and touch base on. Um, I'm open to questions, yes. Uh, not really a question, but just kind of following, following along with that is, uh, you know, even, even when you pay on social media, you don't get that. Uh, He's a client. Everything's okay, I promise. <laughs> you, you don't get that direct, like, interaction. You know, when, no. when you, something like that, you get, you know, like you're saying, you get a notification and, it, and it's direct. You know, even pay for something on social media, you still sometimes have to go and find it. It's not always going to pop up in your face like that, Will. Exactly. That's a powerful tool for breaking your stores that need that full traffic to come back in. Why did Google update the Search Console? Because it seems like you lost, there is the old version you were able to get, I feel like, a little bit more deeper information. You, um, you, 